look at that, will you? I tell you, if you don't take advantage of your state, national, even local parks, you're missing out. All right. Well, we've looked at Plato's conception of form or tried to use it. I've looked at what happens if you accept it. I've looked at what happens if you reject it. Well, let's have a further question. Okay, so Plato is saying that, uh, you know, trying to answer the question, what does it mean to exist, right? He says, well, it's its form, right? Existence is the form. All right, and, and to get that, you have to look at each particular thing, right? Compare all and only particular things of that kind to get the form of that thing and abstract the abstract away from that to get all and only of those kinds of forms to abstract it further up, right? You keep abstracting all the way up, plant, animal, living, non-living, uh, solid, liquid, plasma, right? We could just, there's all kinds of ways we can start categorizing what's, out, categorizing what's out there. We abstract all the way up to being. All right. Well, if you take Plato's conception like this, right, we have a definition of being. So, you know, think about it. We got that definition of square. It's an equilateral, equiangular, quadrilateral, right? <clears throat> that defines square. That's the form square that gives us the meaning of all and only squares. Anything that's not equiangular, not a square. Anything that's not equilateral, not a square. Anything that's not a quadrilateral, not a square, right? And we get this definition of square from looking at all and only squares. We compare squares to mere rectangles, the trapezoids, to triangles, to pentangles, and so on and so forth, right? Okay, so if we get the meaning by looking at all and only things of that kind, what's the definition of being, right? Plato says this sits up atop. This is the good, the true, and the beautiful. This is the sun, being. What does that mean? <laughs> 